Good evening, welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo. I'm one of the English ministry pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church in Embler, Pennsylvania. I'm so glad to be able to share the word of the Lord with you this evening. And before we start, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your love in our lives. And we know, Father, that this evening as we come before you, as we humble ourselves before you, Father, and we come before you with an open heart, we know that you will speak to each and every one of us, Lord. And your servant prays, Father, that each and every one of the people who are listening, Father, that their lives may be touched, Lord, and that no one will leave this program the same as when they first tune and listen in. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This evening, I would like to speak to you regarding Solomon, one of the wisest person that has ever lived in this earth. And of course, if we talk about the wisest person, period, that would be Jesus. And however, Solomon was a person who was really highly respected, not only for the fact that he was very rich and powerful, but because he was a person who had seeked wisdom. And this evening's scripture is taken from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 15. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept from him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on the throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen a great people, too many to be numbered, or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this great people? At Gibeon, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life, or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you or none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we talk about wisdom, we have to understand that wisdom in itself is not just something that we have that we can work on or we can just basically do something and practice and get it, but it is something that is a gift from the Lord. Solomon asked the Lord for something very powerful, and it was wisdom. Riches, honor, all of that followed after wisdom. Wisdom was the first thing that he asked for. When we read this the scripture, this part right here in verse 11, 
It says this, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Wisdom is an understanding to discern what is right, what it is that we should do, and what it is that we should not do. Solomon was finally able to not only take care of the kingdom that the Lord has entrusted him, but Solomon eventually became known as a person who was very intelligent, wise. And the book of Proverbs that he wrote became a powerful book that until today, not only do we read it and we get wisdom, but the words that were written, it's applicable in our lives, in our businesses, in our situation every single day. And we know that if a society, a country, a kingdom is led by a person with wisdom, that kingdom, country, society, city will flourish. Our lives will flourish if we have wisdom. Our company, our business will flourish if we have wisdom. Well, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be good and there's no tough times going to happen in our lives. That's not it. Difficult times may come, but with wisdom, we can overcome it. Difficult situation may come, but with wisdom, we know which decision we must take in order to be able to get through that difficult circumstances. With wisdom, we will be able to navigate through our marriage, to be able to have a better relationship with our children. And with wisdom, we will also be able to lead not only a company, could be also a church, it could be also a newspaper company, whatever it might be. And one thing that Solomon did when he came to the Lord, he came with a humble heart. The fact that he came to the Lord and said, although I am but a little child, means that he was a humble person. He didn't think to himself that, hey, my father was David the great king. I've learned so much from him. I'm capable. I can do this. I don't have, any, I don't have to learn anything from anyone. He could have came with that attitude. He could have said, Lord, I know everything. Just give me more riches. Or Lord, just make all my enemies dead, God. But he did not do that. He came with a humble heart. So today, let's make sure that every single day we come before the Lord and we know that we need to have a humble heart and that also we have to come before the Lord every day to seek His wisdom to make sure that the decisions in life that we take are going to be decisions that will in the end bring something good. Book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 says, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. What did the Lord possess? Wisdom. Wisdom while creating the earth. The seven days of creation. Wisdom was there with the Lord. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. My brothers and my sisters, when you read the Bible and you hear the word fear, don't think of this kind of fear as a negative fear. Not as a fear that the world is telling us. Something that we have to be really scared of. But when we fear the Lord, it means we have awe and reverence. We revere the Lord. That word fear itself means awe and reverence. When we really are awed by the work of the Lord, we know that God is powerful. When we revere Him, we know that He is the one who is worthy of all of our praises, that He is the one who brought our lives to the point where we are today. Book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26 says this, Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. It's true, we do need to study, we need to learn our trade. If you are a mechanic, you have to study how to fix a car. If you are an IT person, you have to learn how to work 
in your field with the computer and things of that nature. However, our own mind, our own strength, our own ability is limited, my brothers and my sisters. But when we have wisdom, it comes from the Lord, it is something that is limitless. It doesn't have a limit to it. Tap into the strength that God has given to the understanding, knowledge that comes from wisdom. If we have wisdom, we should seek that because when we have wisdom, we will be able to then make sure that our lives will be delivered. Delivered from what? Perhaps from a bad business decision, from a wrong person that we shouldn't um, associate ourselves with, or from an action that we shouldn't take, or the other way around, an action that we should take and that we shouldn't delay on. Understanding beyond what our mind could, on its own, comprehend is wisdom. In the book of Psalms, chapter 141, verse 10, it says this, Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. It's true, in life there may be people who wouldn't like you, and no matter how good you've done something, perhaps whether it be from other people or from just circumstances that's created to bring us down, we might trip. But the most important thing is this. When we trip, we will not fall all the way down because the Bible says the Lord upholds the hand of the righteous. In the book of Psalms, chapter 37, it says that. The most important thing is that we stay close to God. Not only do we ask God for wisdom, but we also surrender ourselves before Him, knowing that although people might set nets or snares, traps for us to fall into, just know one thing. When the Lord is on your side, He will be able to make you pass by safely. Today, maybe there are nets, traps that people have set for you or people have tried to get you to trip into that maybe either you know or maybe you don't know about. But when you walk with the Lord, you will be able to walk through safely. And the most important thing is to humbly come before God first and to realize that He is the one who is in control. Psalms 127 verses 1 and 2 says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For he gives to his disciple, his beloved, sleep. He gives to his beloved, sleeps. It's very important that we become, we become God's beloved ones. And how did that happen? It is because Jesus Christ died for your sins and my sins. Because of what Jesus Christ did, you and I can be God's beloved. Unless the Lord builds the house. That house, perhaps it's not an actual house that a person lives in but that could be a career that could be a business that could be a company that could be a an, a project that you are doing no one thing it will be in vain unless the lord watches over it yes we have to work hard yes we have to be diligent we have to be careful in making the right decisions in life on, on, or in our businesses or in our endeavor what that might be studies education but if we only realize on those things alone or we only rely on those things alone it is not going to be enough my brothers my sisters going to work 
early is good, absolutely, I'm all for that. But working, 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 being busy, 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 using our own strength is very limited. We can only achieve limited things. But when we rise up early, work and do our best, work hard and honestly, and we rely on the Lord's guidance, then you will be able to achieve more than you can do on your own. And you will be able to go through difficult circumstances, difficult times, and stay strong. And of course, I'm not saying that 24 hours, seven days a week, you're never sad, you're always strong. No, yes, sadness may be there. Tough times might be there. However, you will always be comforted because you know, Lord Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? God appeared to Solomon in a dream. In the book of Genesis chapter 37, Joseph had a dream as well, in which after he had the dream, he told it to his brothers, but then they hated him even more. Don't be surprised if God is doing something great in your life. There might be people who simply do not like it, who simply are trying to bring you down. And those people sometimes might be people closest to you. That's just a fact in life. We're living in an imperfect world. The book of 1 Kings chapter 9 tells us about the second time that the Lord appeared to Solomon. The Lord appeared to Solomon and it said in 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 2, the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. My brothers and my sisters, of course it's amazing if we could have a direct encounter with God physically. That's absolutely amazing. However, more often than not, or oftentimes I should say, God appears or speaks to us, reminds us of things through our dreams. And that's what happened to Solomon. God can give us visions as well. God can use other people to speak to us. But in the book of Revelation chapter 1, that's what happened to John. He went and had an encounter with Jesus after Jesus rose to the heaven. And that happened as he was there in the island of Patmos in one of the most difficult times of his life, away from the people that he loved, exiled. But then, that was one of the most fruitful times of his ministry. The Lord revealed many things to him through the visions that the Lord had opened up for him. Just like Solomon, who was humble, who realized, who realized that he himself is limited, and who had then come in before the Lord and stayed faithful. Although the life of Solomon wasn't a perfect one. If you read on in the Bible, there, was, there were moments where he then ended up worshipping other gods. However, the most important thing is that though he stumbled, he didn't stay fallen the whole time. He got up again and returned to his first love, to the love of the Lord. It tells us that none of us are perfect, but it reminds us that because we are imperfect, we have to guard our hearts. The Bible says, above all else, guard your hearts with all vigilance, for fr from it flows the springs of life. First things first, in life, don't seek after riches and success as being your number one pursuit. But one, the life of a Christian must be that first we seek wisdom. Second, ask guidance from the Lord through your prayers and reading the Bible. And three, by faith, live life with wisdom. Amen. May the Lord bless you. And today, if any of you have never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you have never made the Jesus the Lord of your life, I would like to invite you to pray this prayer with me. I would like to invite you
to come before Jesus, repent from your sins, come before God, and make the Lord Jesus the Lord of your life, so that you may have eternal life, so that you can have peace, joy, and strength in this life. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord, come into my heart, Father. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe, Lord, you died and you rose again for my sins. And I believe, Lord, you're going to come back again soon. Amen. And Lord Jesus, right now, your servant would like to pray for all the other listeners, God. If anyone is sick, I pray for healing in Jesus' name. If anyone here, Father, is in a difficult situation, may you yourself, God, strengthen, help them, Lord. Deliver them out of these difficult situations. And right now, Lord, we know that as we end this program, your words will continue to do work in our lives and in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, God's people say, Amen. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time.